So after having developed a basic model for the noise in the transistors, now let's start looking at some circuits, in particular some amplifiers. And what you're trying to understand in this, con in, in, in this discussion is the concept, introduction to the concept of input referred noise and how the noise in the basic transistor model works. So let's, let's start talking about a very basic transistor amplifier. Let's think about a common source amplifier with a resistive load. Let's call it R1. So this is V in and V out. By now we should know kind of like how this behave, this stage behaves cold, right? If we ignore RO, what is the gain of this stage? The voltage gain is basically V out over V in, which is negative GM R1, right? If you ignore RO. If, R, if you don't ignore RO, of course it would be R1 parallel RO, right? Whatever that is. So let's think about it from a noise perspective. Let's look at, for now, let's start doing it still with the small signal model. So what, do, what kind of noise sources do we have? So our MOSFET, let's say you have, a, um, you have an input, and you're looking at it for now for, with low at low frequencies. You have a resistance RG. Um, you have the GM VGS, which is the, the good part of the transistor the useful part. Now you also have the noise sources. You have the channel noise source, which is probably the most, well, often the most important one, which is 4KT gamma GD0. And if it was a non-velocity saturated device, then GD0 becomes GM. Um, now, what else do we have? We have the thermal noise of the RG, so Vg squared over delta F, which is going to be 4kT um, Rg. And then you have the flicker noise of the transistor itself, right? Let's say Vf squared over delta F, which is going to be Kf over C ox WLF. And now that, this is basically the transistor part, and then you also have the resistor, right? R1 to ground, which will also produce its own thermal noise, right? IR squared over delta F, which would be 4KT over R. This is the current. So you have all these noise sources in your circuit, and you're trying to find out what the noise is. Now, when we say what the noise is, where do we really care about the noise? Presumably at the output, right? That's where we are going to see, where we see the outcome of the noise. So we are trying to find out what is the total noise that the output do to these four sources. So let's see. Again, we can use superposition, right? So, so, and you have an input source that's a voltage source, so you can actually null it and set it to ground. So this is, these are the four sources you have. You're trying to find out what is the output noise. So V, so we, let's say the output voltage noise, V out noise squared over delta F. So let's look at them one at a time. Let's start from maybe, yeah, let's start from the output. So, so what is the noise, how is the noise of this guy will appear at the output when all the other independent sources are nulled, right? Because these are noise sources are independent sources, right? So if you null that this is going to be open, these two are going to be short circuited. So what do you have? This, this, Dependent source goes all to zero, right? It becomes open circuit because GF, VGS is zero. So that disappears. So all you have is this R1 at the output when you've nulled all the independent sources. So it's this current being injected to this R1 producing a voltage. So the transfer function is really R1 squared. The transfer function magnitude squared is R1 squared. So to get the output voltage due to that guy, you basically have, um, R1 squared times um, IR squared over delta F, which you can write as, again, 4KT over R1. So that's the contribution to the output of that source. Now, similarly, for this channel noise source, the channel noise source is really essentially in parallel with IR, right? And the same thing is true. Again, if you null all the independent sources, it will go through the same transfer function. So you can actually even say it's R2, R1 squared 
the sum of the power of these two. Now, why are we adding the powers? Because from the physical argument, you can, you can see that the noise generated, in, the thermal noise generated in the channel of this guy and the thermal noise generated by this resistor are not going to be depend, correlated, right? There's no interaction with them. So they're depend, generated by different physical processes, and that's what you get. So now what else? Then you have these two voltage sources, right? Noise voltage sources that are going through the system. Now, a voltage source here will produce the same voltage here because this is an open circuit here, which would be, GM, v, it would be VGS, so it would get multiplied by GM, and that GM gets multiplied by R, R1 to produce the output voltage. So basically, it's the transfer function from the input voltage to the output voltage, this guy, magnitude squared. So whatever you get here, you're going to have a GM R1 both squared times these two voltage sources, VF squared over delta F plus VG squared over delta F. So this is the noise that you will see at the output if you actually have some sort of a sensitive meter, right? If you had a good power meter, noise power, you, you could go and measure this power. If you had a spectrum analyzer, a very sensitive spectrum analyzer, you can go and sit there. I mean, you need to have some modification. You have to put amplification in there to see this. But you will see that there's noise. There's physical noise here, which you can measure. And when you measure it, if you've done modeling properly, you will get something close to this in terms of the noise power. So that's measurable. That's something that's there, the output noise. That's what affects your system. But the challenge is that, as you can see, the output noise, for example, if I increase my GM1, GMR1, if I increase my gain, I get more output noise, right? So it, appear, it may appear that, OK, well, you know, if you want to minimize the output noise, is, then you need to minimize your gain. But is that what we are trying to look, looking for, really, in a circuit? No, right? Why? Because what, we, what do we really care about when noise is involved? We care about noise because it determines what? The lowest level of signal we can detect. So we really do care about the signal to noise ratio. So for example, when your GM1, GMR1, your voltage gain goes up, your signal is also stronger, right? So it's not clear by just looking at the output noise whether or not this is a, an improvement or degradation in the circuit. I mean, Right? So it, it will be, but you have to kind of like make arguments. Now, that's why we take the input referred noise, uh, they talk about the so-called concept of input referred noise. Because the comparison of the output, although it's very measurable, is not very accurate. Ideally, what, what do you need? You want to say, if I had a signal here, right, the signal, how does the signal power compare to the noise at the output, and or, or equivalently saying that if I were to take all of these noise sources that are present and lump them into one source, if I could do that, say in this case, let's say one voltage source, and we'll see that one voltage source is not sufficient later, uh, soon after this, uh, that what happens is that you want to say, OK, what would be the input noise source that would produce the same noise at the output if everything else was noiseless. So instead of doing four noise sources, you can say, OK, if I want to make one and put it at the input so it produces the same output noise, what would that noise source be? And the value of making something like this is that you can now compare it to your signal that you're receiving at the input and see, OK, well, that equivalent input noise source is much larger than my signal. So both of them are going to go through the gain of the system, so my signal-to-noise ratio is not going to be high anyway. Or if you see that your input-referred noise is much lower than the, the signal you're dealing with, say, well, I'm good, because you know, if I lumped all of my sources into an equivalent input-noise source that going through the transfer function of the system would produce the same output noise, then I'm good. So that's why we define the concept of input-referred noise, basically meaning that we are talking about the in noise over delta F, which would be to take the output preferred noise, the output noise, which is a measurable quantity, and divide it by the gain of the system, or in general, the transfer function magnitude squared. In this case, it would be GM 
R1 squared. So if you scale it back to the input and divide it by the transfer function that it would see going through, then you can say what would the equivalent input noise source be. And if you do that, if you take this expression, what you will see is that you will see 1 over, for example, gm squared from this one, um, ir squared over delta f plus i channel squared over delta f plus the two voltage noise sources. This cancels that, as it should, right? Because those are already at the input. Those two noise sources, the flicker noise and the gate resistance noise, were already at the input to begin with. They were here. So you get them back, obviously. right? And then if you want to really express them in terms of the parameters, then you can actually do it this way. You can say 1 over gm squared, and then you put the actual parameters here. You can say 4kt gamma, let's say gm, so if you're assuming non-velocity saturated, um, here plus uh, 4kt r1. Right? And plus whatever the voltage, the, the voltage parts are, the two voltage noise sources, which then you can simplify to write as 4kt gamma over gm, again for non-velocity saturated device, plus 4kt over gm squared r1, plus 4kt rg, plus kf, uh, over C ox W L F, which is the flicker noise part. So this is your input referred noise source. Now, one important point. If you take a measuring device, a very precise measuring, a power meter, and put it at the input here, or a spectrum analyzer, you do not see, I emphasize, you do not see this noise there. This is an equivalent noise we've actually calculated to put at the input to say what's the effect of all these noise sources lumped into. It's not physically there. You can't measure it there. Right? It's an equivalent of all the noise sources that are there. So whenever you're trying to do noise calculation, the way to do it is to find the output noise and then reflect it to input through the inverse of the transfer function, magnitude squared. Because that's where the noise actually shows itself. But we talk about the input referred noise a lot because it's a good way of comparing the signal to the noise at the input. But it's not physically there. I like to emphasize this a lot. At least not all of it is physically there. Part of it may be. For example, you may see the noise associated with this guy. But you may not see the noise associated with the R1. Right? So, what does this tell us? What does this calculation tell us? This basic calculation. And we'll do more of these calculations later. But let's look at the parameters and see. An equation is useful to the extent that it teaches us something new, right? So it says if you want to reduce the input referred noise. This is a good thing to reduce now, though, right? Because you are trying to minimize your input referred noise because that allows you to detect smaller and smaller signals, right? That's what it can do. So let's say we want, this is the quantity we are trying to minimize. We are trying to minimize it. What does it tell you about the parameters of the circuit? Well, it says you can increase GM, right? GM up, input referred noise goes down, right? It reduces the input referred noise due to both the channel noise and the other resistor. Why does it do that? Because, yes, your channel noise, your output noise actually goes up with GM, but what happens is that it reduces more because of the gain. In other words, the input referred noise, which is what matters, is improved by increasing GM, which basically is another way of saying that you have more gain and you're reducing your gain by, by spending more power, for example. One way to increase the GM would be spending more power. So there's a trade-off there between the noise and gain. And, and, and power, sorry. Noise and gain. Noise and power. So you can, buy, you can reduce your input referred noise by spending more power. What else? Well, temperature is there, obviously, right, in all of them. So if you want to make a lower noise system, and many of, if you want to lower many of these noise sources, what do you do? If you really, that was the only thing you wanted to do, you operate at lower temperature. A lot of cryogenic circuits, right? If you're doing radio astronomy, right, 
you don't operate at room temperature, you keep it at liquid helium temperature or even cooler, and you try to get the lowest noise that way. What else? Well, it says if the flicker noise was a concern, one of the things you could do, you can make the, the, the device size larger, the W and L of the device larger. And what that does, it basically make, increases the gate capacitance. Again, there's a trade-off. Now, that's the trade-off is between noise and speed, at least the flicker noise. Because you are making the capacitors larger, it means that your circuit's going to become have larger time constants in, in principle, and it can be in principle slower. So there's that, those trade-offs that you can tell from looking at these expressions. Now, one of the things that's important, and we'll discuss later, is that you will see that in general, it's not sufficient to have one input referred noise source. You need at least two. You need a current and a voltage. And we'll discuss that next time when we talk about the, the, the equivalent, total complete equivalent model for noise. And what we'll see is that any circuit with as many noise sources as you might have can be reduced to an, a noiseless circuit with a current and a voltage input referred noise. So everything can be lumped into a noiseless circuit and two sources. And you can model the entire noise of the circuit that way. Come up with an equivalent circuit for noise. Okay? Any questions? All right.